personally, I'm of course not new to the consortium. Uh, previously, I was with Philips Research, which was previously the member here in the consortium, and Sapiens is, uh, is happy to take over that role. So, um, I will talk a little bit uh, about, uh, about Sapiens, um, as we are a new and young company, uh, to give you a bit of an idea where we come from, where we're going, and then I will end with a few uh, statements on, on how we look to brain gain. So, Sapiens is about uh, brain stimulation, uh, deep brain stimulation in particular, and you can think of that as a, as a kind of a brain pacemaker. Uh, similar like pacemakers uh, for the heart were developed uh, a few decades ago. So essentially the system consists of a, a pulse generator, let's say a battery which supplies the electrical energy, a cable which runs underneath the patient's skin to two electrodes which are implanted through small holes in the skull to a particular region in the brain. And by pacing the brain, um, uh, it is possible to suppress the specific motor symptoms uh, associated to Parkinson's disease. And I will show you here this, uh, this short movie. Uh, I'll my, yeah. I will show you here this short movie. When, when I started, you see this uh, gentleman uh, who was operated several years ago uh, in, in Oxford with a DBS system. And when the movie starts, his stimulator is turned off. Um, on the side here, he is. Um, he is taking his programming device and then turns on his stimulator and then you will get some uh, feeling of what DBS can mean to these people. So you see the, the trembling in his right hand, quite, quite severe, difficulty in turning programming and programmer. Now he keeps the programmer on his chest where the pacemaker is located. He turns it on, and not here. Within seconds the tremor disappears. So you can imagine, I mean, we cut out a part of the movie, actually it's interesting, afterwards now he is explaining that when a stimulator is turned off, the only thing he can do is actually think the word, the word Parkinson's and try to control his, his symptoms of his disease. So, for this patient, uh, DBS is really a, a great benefit and, and, and returns all of quality of life. So you can summarize that. I see that here. Um, DBS was, let's say, invented at the end of the 80s. Uh, so there's a lot of experience on its safety and it works for patients, but there are also problems. For example, stimulation may leak out of the target, and in 15 to 30 percent of patients, this leads to uh, unwanted side effects of therapy. A problem with the devices, and also you can imagine if this electrode, if this probe is not exactly on the right spot in the brain then probably you're not going to get the desired outcome. So the procedure, and to achieve that, it's, it's considered still complicated. There's a lot of expertise needed, and makes it also costly to hospitals. And you know, as Leo explained, uh, you know, the world still dr runs on economy, let's say. So also the, the financial aspects of, of this therapy are, are important to make it available to patients. So what does Sapiens do? Um, on the left, you see the, uh, the electrode system as it is being used in today's practice. So it consists of four relatively large annular rings. And when such an electrode is implanted in the target, for instance, this small structure here, which is called the subthalamic nucleus, the STN, um, it may very well occur that some of the stimulation leaks outside that target, simply because you have no control over where it goes. And this is the reason why you get these side effects. At Sapiens, we are developing uh, the probe, which you see here on the right-hand side, uh, which has 64. <coughs> I think my pen broke down. Which has 64 individual programming ball contacts, and you can imagine that you can use that to very precisely steer uh, the stimulation fields towards the target. So, whereas with the old system, you would have to reduce the stimulation intensity to prevent the side effects from happening, with our system, you will be able to steer away from those regions and to deliver. Uh, let's say the maximal amount of stimulation to, to the target and the hope of course with this remains to be proven uh, is that this will uh, improve the, the outcome of, uh, for patients who receive this kind of therapy. So then step two, if you have such a magnificent electrode of course that's nice but if you don't get it at the right place still it will not be able to deliver and even if you do get it at the right place but you don't know how to program it still your patients will not benefit optimally from that. 
So that's the second part of the proposition Sapiens is working on. That is enabling uh, doctors to provide uh, the optimal treatment for their patients. And we do that by the development of a, of a number of applications which start from the pre-operative phase where you want to plan your uh, surgical procedure in such a way that you really can get the optimized uh, therapeutic outcome. Intraoperatively, we can report the signals from the brain from the electrode, like an EEG, but then using the invasive electrode to confirm that we are at the appropriate target in the brain. And then finally, postoperatively, we are developing uh, an application which, um, with visual means, can support uh, users in trying to program this complex device. So, I mean, we actually, I was in the US two weeks ago, and we, we tell the story, of course, to a lot of people all around to the world uh, to get their feedback on, and, you know, this is what they are telling us. So, the field is really looking to, to these kind of innovations, and it's, it's important for us to get back this kind of feedback uh, to make sure that we are on the right uh, on the right track. So Sapiens uh, was founded uh, half a year ago, half a year and uh, 18 days uh, now. So we're still a relatively young company. Uh, previously, this was a, a project which ran at Philips Research for several years, until at some stage Philips decided that um, deep brain stimulation was not strategic to the company. Um, and then we got the opportunity from Philips management to, to spin this out. So um, I, together with my colleagues Michel de Cray and Shark Daggers, uh, spent a year touring uh, Europe trying to get some money. And we managed to get uh, three venture capitalists, Wellington, Edmunds and, and LSP, on board uh, to fund our company. And um, at the moment we are uh, burning very hard this money and trying to make uh, really beautiful technology out of that. So how does brain gain fit into, uh, into this? Well, first of all, uh, within brain gain, we have close collaborations with Leo mentioned already uh, at TMSI, with whom we are developing uh, hardware and software for the intraoperative part. We have good collaborations with Twente and, uh, and the hospital here in Maastricht, also on research for TBS. In specific, um, uh, we contribute to work packages 4.3 and 4.2, which are really aimed at basic research uh, for brain recording to support better DBS uh, target recognition. And I explained that it's really of utmost importance to get the probe precisely on the target to get the best outcome for patients. That's why we think this is important. <coughs> of course, brain gain for us is uh, an interesting opportunity to get also feedback from, from other users, both clinical users and, and, and patient groups. And in a sense, it, it is our hinterland. Uh, of course, the, the world is indeed bigger than the Netherlands, but the Netherlands is, is close by. So also when we were still at Philips Research, we considered important to con contribute to such consortia to also strengthen applied neuro research infrastructure in the Netherlands, and I emphasis applied. So what, what can we contribute? Um, step one, of course, being an industrial partner, we can play a role in valorization. And I think one, one thing where we are quite proud, together with the MSI, we managed to get a follow-up uh, grant called PIC, which was uh, realized uh, last year via Point One funding. We have, of course, a lot of especially specialist knowledge on, on DBS, but also more generic industrial knowledge that we can bring into the con consortium. Uh, for instance, by providing reality check on valorization proposals, <coughs> Uh, Leo already explained having a research prototype is nice, um, but it's still a, a big step before you can put something on the market. And I think we can add value there because we have that experience. Um, part of that, of course, is also, let's, let's see, to, to challenge the academic research, um, have an application mindset on the research you are doing, and uh, try to think, you know, one or two steps uh, uh, further and, and have an open mind also uh, for that um, because at least from my own experience uh, I can say that um, I did my PhD 10 years ago and then I joined Philips where I contributed first to DVD development so now we are doing this bring technology to uh, to hopefully medical users in the future patients and um, in my experience this is really much more fun than being in the academy uh, writing your papers. If you manage to bring 
smart ideas uh, to the benefit for users. It's uh, very rewarding, I can tell you. So, with that, I would like to thank you for attention and uh, hopefully you still have time for your dinner. Thank you.